No legislation has not yet been passed dealing with the registration of SMSF auditors. Currently, the exposure draft to the legislation has only just closed. Uh, industry experts are presently working with Treasury to finalise the legislation. Um, however, to cut a long story short, registration will be required from 1 July 2013. The window for registration will open 31 January 2013, whereby auditors who want to apply for registration can uh, apply from this date. The first requirement for the applicant to obtain registration is to demonstrate that they meet the appropriate qualifications prescribed by regulations. It's our understanding that these appropriate qualifications will include the requirement for the applicant to demonstrate they have passed an appropriate tertiary qualification or advanced diploma, which includes an audit component. Otherwise, the applicant is also able to demonstrate they meet the appropriate qualifications if they have passed their professional accounting bodies program, which includes the audit component. The second component of the SMSF auditor registration requirements involves a practical component. And when we talk about the practical component, we really need to divide auditors up into three categories. Category one are the improved auditors currently auditing more than 20 self-managed super funds each year. Category two are those approved auditors who currently audit less than 20 super fund audits each year. And category three are the non-approved auditors or essentially the staff members working for an employer. The third component of the SMSF auditor registration process involves a knowledge component. The knowledge component will require those wishing to become registered auditors to pass a, an exam established by ASIC which is yet to be determined. There will be exemptions though for those auditors mentioned previously who currently audit more than 20 self-managed super funds whereby they will be exempt from sitting and passing this exam. For those applicants who don't possess the requisite qualifications, the legislation also provides the show cause provision whereby applicants are able to demonstrate the requisite experience and thereby enabling them to apply for registration. For those required to pass the ASIC competency exam, the IPA will be running a series of training courses designed to help you prepare for the upcoming competency exam. Keep an eye out on the IPA website for more details. The ongoing annual requirements that auditors must adhere to when they're auditing self-managed super funds can be categorised into four components. The first component involves the auditor submitting an annual return to ASIC outlining the number of audits they've previously undertaken in the 12 months prior to uh, the end of the registration period. The second component auditors must adhere to is the requirement to show cause that they've audited sufficient number of self-managed super funds in the previous five years, thereby demonstrating they meet the practical experience component. The third component auditors must continually adhere to is the requirement to meet the competency requirements established by the regulations. We do not yet know what those competency requirements will involve, however there is a feeling that these requirements will resemble the competency requirements SMSF auditors currently need to meet as uh, prescribed by their accounting body. And the fourth element of the competency requirements involves the auditor's requirement to continually meet the fit and proper person test.